I, I want to go back to, you know, I've always had this impression that the United States is, you know, kind of uh, land of liberty, America, and, you know, Europe is, you know, the land of tight regulation. Um, but you're actually saying that the London Stock Exchange is actually, there's a less regulatory overhead to actually IPO on the London Stock Exchange. Can you give me like a little compare and contrast? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, for a start, if you look at AIM as a AIM versus the main market, now AIM has a separate regulatory structure to the main market. So if you do a main market IPO, that prospectus gets approved by the UKLA, which is part of the FCA, which is our equivalent of the SEC. Okay. Um, that process on the main market is completely confidential from start to finish. The mm. only thing that becomes public is a prospectus once you price your deal, whereas wow. in the US all of the correspondence becomes public between the issuer and, and the SEC. So that even on the main market, there is a, I think a more issuer friendly kind of positioning with regards to uh, the way you interact with the regulator. Now for AIM, the prospectus, which is actually for, for AIM called an admission document is not even um, reviewed by the regulator, it is actually reviewed by the nominated advisor, which is an investment bank and also the directors and the legal advisors of the company and the directors and the nominated advisor basically attest the suitability of the company to go public. So we have a very different regulatory structure and obviously it is in the best interests of everyone involved and certainly an investment bank from a reputational and kind of other exposure point of view that they are absolutely positive that the company is suitable to be listed on AIM. But mm. for, that, for that reason, AIM is not a retail market. You can only distribute AIM stock at the time of IPO mm. to institutional investors. And I think that's an important distinction to make. But the UK is a predominantly institutional investor-driven market anyway, much mm. more so than the US is where US IPOs, there is, a there is a sizable retail element to them. In the UK, there tends not to be. Although, perversely, if you look at UK crowdfunding as an example, Mm -hmm. uh, equity crowdfunding in the UK is much stronger than it is in the US because regulation allowed it to be quite frankly. Mm. Um, the, I think that in the US there has always there has been um, and I think this is probably an advent of what happened around the turn of you know the turn of the millennium if you want to mm -hmm. say um, since like Sarbanes-Oxley there were a number of scandals and I think that there was a regulatory crackdown and a number of things were put in place that made it somewhat more difficult. But I think people understand why they did it because they wanted yeah. to protect investors and we can all understand that. The UK did not have as big a problem with regards to that. And, you know, if you look at the issues that we've had, we don't have any more issues than the US does with regards to difficulties with companies that you know you know things like fraud and negligence and that kind of thing we don't have any other typical you know we don't have a worse problem because we have this different structure mm -hmm. uh, but what i think the view is that from most people is that this works pretty well and it's also something that is appropriate to the size of the company and if you look at the companies that are listed on aim they tend to have blue chip advisors they'll have your you know top six, seven accountants in the world. They'll have legal advisors you will have heard of. They'll have investment banks you will have heard of. Um, and the level of diligence that's done for these deals, and if you look at a, a yeah, AIM admission document versus the main market prospectus, the content is pretty much identical, and the diligence that goes into them is pretty much identical because it has to be, because you mm. have to make sure that you are doing the right amount of work and making sure that investors are protected in the right way.